400,000 feet above the Earth's surface, the Space Shuttle Columbia re-enters the atmosphere. Within moments, it'll be an erupting fireball. All seven astronauts will be dead. February the 1st, 2003. 280 kilometers above the Earth. A team of NASA's top astronauts aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia prepare to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, the most dangerous maneuver of their 16-day mission. London, Paris, Tel Aviv, Moscow, Beijing, Vancouver, New York, then London again. Around the world in 90 minutes. The shuttle blazing in its orbit at 28,000 kilometers per hour. The astronauts experience 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every day. Now they must return to Earth. The hour leading up to Columbia's re-entry is a flurry of activity at John F. Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The man who must bring Columbia back to Earth is Leroy Kane, flight director. At 8.03 a.m., Kane begins his checklist. Bringing Columbia back into the atmosphere is the most dangerous part of the mission because re-entry exposes the shuttle to 1,500 degree heat. 8.12 a.m. The crew of the Space Shuttle Columbia prepares to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and begin descent to Cape Canaveral. They are scheduled to touch down in exactly one hour, four minutes. They are NASA's best and brightest. Willie McCool, pilot. Kalpana Chawla, engineer. Michael Anderson, payload commander. Laurel Clark, zoologist. David Brown, flight surgeon. Ilan Ramon, electronics expert. The shuttle had launched 16 days earlier. Columbia was the oldest of the fleet, and this was its 28th mission. Like landing, Takeoff is a high-risk time for the spacecraft and its passengers. At launch, the Columbia weighs four and a half million pounds. Much of that weight is fuel, housed in an orange foam-covered tank directly under the shuttle. Basically, the Columbia is hardwired to a big bomb. Back in 1986, the world had watched stupefied when the space shuttle Challenger turned into a fireball on takeoff. This terrible image scarred NASA's safety record. Almost two decades later, as Columbia launched, the fear of another disaster lingered. Columbia's mission had been delayed 13 times over two years because of technical snags. But at last, liftoff. NASA had been under a lot of pressure to get Columbia into space after so many setbacks. The seconds which follow liftoff are the most dangerous for the mission as the shuttle fights to escape the Earth's gravity. The Columbia launch appeared to be a textbook success. The shuttle was in orbit 300 kilometers above the Earth, racing at 28,000 kilometers per hour for an astronaut it's a breathtaking moment. This mission was for space research. The shuttle bay was fitted with a science lab to conduct experiments designed to help scientists learn about long-term survival in space. The experiments ranged from tests on animals, fish and ants, to the study of weightlessness. One day after what had seemed a perfect launch, a team inspecting video footage discovered that a piece of foam cladding from the main fuel tank had come loose and hit the shuttle during liftoff. But there had been foam hits before. No one was unduly worried. 8.20 a.m., the countdown for Columbia's re-entry to the atmosphere is well advanced. But though the foam hit's been known about for two weeks, there's a consequence neither crew nor ground control are even now aware of. Two days into the flight, a piece of the leading edge of the left wing hit by the foam fell off. Unseen and unknown, there's a gaping hole in the shuttle's left wing. 
It went unnoticed at the time, because from the command capsule on the Columbia, the crew could not see the wings. The shuttle could easily orbit in space with an undetected hole in its wing, but it would not be able to return to the Earth's atmosphere. Blissfully unaware, the astronauts held a video conference with Earth and the International Space Station the day after the piece of wing fell off. It's their day. And what we do is we gather, we try and pass on what we've learned from the uh, previous shift and uh, what the status of the various payloads is. And of course, we're getting ready to go home, so we're doing exercise and uh, even doing push-ups in order to be ready to feel good when we get back to Earth. Push-ups seem a little bit easier here for some reason. The Columbia was technically ready for touchdown at Cape Canaveral at 9.16 on February the 1st. No one on board the shuttle or on Earth had any idea that there was a gaping hole in Columbia's left wing, and the astronauts were doomed. Just over half an hour from their scheduled touchdown, all systems seemed perfectly normal on the space shuttle Columbia. Two minutes later, Columbia enters the discernible atmosphere, 400,000 feet above the Earth's surface. The utter cold of space gives way to intense heat on Columbia's hull. The temperature of the shuttle's wing soars to 1,400 degrees Celsius. Unknown to anyone, the superheated air starts to enter the wing through the undetected hole. Columbia slows by 800 kilometers per hour, still traveling faster than any object ever created by man. This is the danger zone, losing speed and catching air. Inside the command capsule, the astronauts stare in awe at the raging heat outside the glowing windows. There is just one anomaly. A sensor on the left wing shows the leading edge is 1,650 degrees, 500 degrees hotter than ever recorded on a shuttle re-entry. At mission control, technicians are puzzled by the unexplained temperatures. These high temperatures are coming from the landing gear area of the left wing. 